So we are visiting today a 36 meter sailing yacht with a wooden uh, epoxy laminated hull. The boat was built in 2013. She has five cabins for 10 guests. The boat was built in Sioux Marine Shipyard in Istanbul. This shipyard is built in amazing quality, which I'm going to point out during the tour. She just uh, finished uh, a famous race down here in Turkey, which is called the Bodrum Cup. She finished first from about 25 uh, yachts at her class. She is a real sailing yacht. Uh, she will do 11 to 14 knots at a reasonable uh, wind speed, above 80 knots. Uh, quite an amazing boat. We are going to make uh, a full walkthrough today on board. So join me and let's start. We are starting this video today from the bow. Uh, the boat length overall, including the bow spirit, is 40 meter. Um, there are two uh, four sails here. Uh, both are controlled by Bumar hydraulic furlers. Uh, the sails has been removed now. And the reason for that is that the boat is going uh, to be hauled out tomorrow uh, to her winter service. She just finished very uh, successful charter season with 12 weeks. So also what we are going to see today is a little bit of a arrangement to the haul out. So it's not going to be 100% tidy. Now the boat was built from a very quality mahogany wood, which is laminated with epoxy. Uh, she was built uh, by Sioux Marine. It's a very good shipyard, which probably is one of the best shipyards that built in this uh, construction method. You can see here the frame, how they are painted, and I'm going to point out inside when we come uh, to show you in the engine room the quality of construction, which will, is going to be quite obvious. Um, so this is the, the deck areas, there are vast deck areas here, beautiful sitting area here at the bow. As you can see here, and nice uh, uh, air vents, classical air vents from stainless steel and just uh, under this hatch there is a crew area one of three uh, for two personnel two crew members a little bit heavy to lift okay so it's a bit messy uh, but anyway as i explained the boat is going to be hauled out so everybody is arranging their stuff to pack you can see uh, the two beds down below. It also has its own uh, shower and toilets. Down here under the this uh, deck hatches there's big storage. Same in the other side and returning a little bit forward we have very big uh, windlasses from data with massive change and uh, long chain and you have access to the chain locker just from here so we will slowly move backwards And you can already see that uh, all the four sails, the mizan, the main sail, and the two four sails has been folded nicely. They will go for a uh, winter storage. A uh, little bit of more deck equipment, swimming ladder. Now you can see here there is a beautiful sun deck, and the fact that it's uh, has this depth inside the deck is allowing people to relax here safely while the boat is sailing which is quite amazing experience um, 
Now the the masts are from Dokar. It's a it's a very famous and good uh, producers for standing rigging in Turkey. This is the mainsail and this is the Mizan. The overall sail area of this yacht is a little bit more than 700 square meter, not including a spinnaker, just the Mizan, the main and the two uh, four sails. Very nice uh, uh, pilot house which is combined with the salon. We are going to see it very soon. And what we see here is uh, one of two uh, boarding ladder in both sides, port side and starboard, there are boarding ladders. Let's see the, the one at the port side, which is uh, open. So here you can see <coughs> the other uh, boarding stairs, so you have them in both sides. We will move backwards and in the meantime I would like to show you the quality of woodwork on this boat. The boat has been built in 2013 and kept in a very good condition. She is owned by her second owner which owns her since 2016. We are moving forward. We just passed the door. Let me show you. Look a little bit back, which is show, uh, which is uh, an entrance to the pilot house. And we are moving backwards. We can see the Sumarine logo here. And here we are at this beautiful out deck. This is Barney. Hi, Barney. And we have a beautiful um, relaxing area here, sunbathing, which is all around the aft deck. Large table for up to 10 people can sit around. Here we have another corner with small seating space which is sheltered from the wind nice pen nice place to spend time while the boat is uh, motoring or cruising sheltered a little bit from the wind this is the Mizan mast uh, stepped here on the support and we have a small uh, wet bar there are fridges down here And just underneath the bags, there is a small sink. Additional storage space here. The, this ice uh, machine has been taken out for service. This is its place. And it's a good chance to see this aft deck from a different position. Now we will move a little bit uh, further backwards and we will see that there are davits here to lift the dinghy. Beautiful work, beautiful details, combination of stainless steel together with wood. Also, you can see this arch, which is the connection point for the for trimming the mizan sail. Just here, a stern light, 
again beautiful details this is a nice chance to see the lamination this is not one piece of wood these are layers of wood that has been glued together in this shape together with quality epoxy and this is the result super strong structure now there is a there is a bimini here kind of a bimini or sun owing supported by a stainless steel frame there are lights embedded within the pipes this one and we are moving inside to the salon and let's have a look at the interior of this boat so as I mentioned before the boat is about to be hauled out tomorrow uh, the crew did the maximum to make her look tidy while they are making some preparations now this is the the salon it's a very intimate salon it's not a big salon but it's somehow designed very beautifully and in this area you can watch tv and there is another sitting corner here and obviously the table can be extended and now you can start to notice the interior design of this boat which is very unusual for a Turkish boat a gullet though this boat doesn't have the typical design of a gullet but uh, some people might uh, categorize her as such <clears throat> so here we have another uh, bar service area uh, that coffee can be prepared there is a lot of uh, storage space underneath uh, coffee tea uh, plates cups and so on as you can see there are some nice uh, items for design and they are all ready to be packed and to be stored over the winter and on the other side there is the uh, pilot uh, or helm station and basically all the equipment here Navigation and communication is coming from Raymarine. Uh, you can see the Raymarine hybrid uh, touch. There are two screens here to screen the chart plotter, radar, and so on. And also some multi displays for depth, speed, wind direction, and speed. Um, <clears throat> down here we can see the autopilot. And we can also see uh, two controllers for the Scania engines. There are two. Scania engines each with 430 horsepower with about 3,000 uh, running hours at the moment electrical uh, control for the rudders and rudder indicator and of course the VHF is here down here there is Navtex uh, control for the fire, uh, fire uh, uh, detectors and here in the middle it's the ship control screen which shows the tank levels, uh, opening hatches, um, uh, electrical voltage in the batteries and so on. So let's turn the camera slowly and then you can see the view that is available. Basically it's a 360 degrees view there is a remote control to control the boat outside of the pilot house so that's another option to steer the boat uh, while the captain uh, can position himself uh, whenever he wants to be um, the boat is about to renew her Rena class uh, which has been expired two years ago but uh, the owner decided to put her back into Rena class and this should be quite easy to do uh, because everything is set according to Rena requirements now from here uh, we will go downstairs to see the the cabins 
and we are moving down in quite sharp <coughs> um, stairway which about 12 stairs and here we are in a long corridor which leads to five cabins two of them the VIP cabins or the double cabins are here the port side and the starboard side there are another two cabins which are slightly smaller there and up there at the front there is the master cabin so we will start from the port side a uh, guest cabin it's a beautiful cabin very special design uh, you, you will see that the theme of design are repeating but each cabin has its own uniqueness uh, with different fabric pattern there uh, on the back of the boat uh, of the boat sorry <laughs> on the back of the bed and uh, around the frame of the bed uh, you will see this theme the mirror with this uh, design item and this uh, these themes on the side of the beds each cabin has a surround bose music system uh, there is quite a lot of storage space all around um, tv here and then there is a very big hanging drawer here another storage up there and some deep drawers yep. here down here another two like this and also down here so there is plenty of storage also behind the mirror deep storage spaces and this thing is going out you can charge your phone there is an electric socket here and let's go to see the ensuite now they used a lot of uh, black marble when they designed this boat so it's always a challenge for the camera to see the details um, it might be recommended to improve the lightning system just by changing the bulbs to more um, white ones rather than uh, yellowish one that can help and then this is the shower again using black marble so I'm not sure how much the camera sees um, so there is another uh, there is a small bench here and we are stepping out slowly And last look at this cabin and we are moving to the starboard side identical cabin crossing the corridor and here we are in the second uh, VIP cabin there is a lot of, little bit of a suitcase and uh, some storage some of the things will be as I said before will be stored and uh, during the winter so the crew was in full steam arranging these kind of things and I had to stop them to make this video just before the boat is being hauled out so here we have a little bit of uh, natural light from the porthole and talking about this porthole you can see that uh, you can open this and have fresh air on the other hand you have a stainless steel um, stainless steel uh, uh, clothes so for bad weather you can double seal it and these are the requirements of Rena class the boat was built to Rena class and was classed until uh, 2018 or 19 and as I said now the class is going to be renewed 
uh, it's not going to be a big issue because everything is set for the class in terms of requirements, uh, escape hatches, and so on. So we are stepping out from this uh, starboard VIP cabin. Uh, you can see that the fabric pattern is changed, stripes on the uh, other cabin, it was kind of dotted. And we are back into the corridor, turning right and going forward to see additional two guest cabins, which are slightly smaller. We will start with the starboard side. It's another double bed. Uh, there is access only from this side to the bed. Um, you have storage space underneath. Down here, some drawers down here. And a very big uh, hanging drawer. And this cabin has its own ensuite. And this time the ensuite is fabricated with a white marble. So I think you can see much better around and then again it's still recommended to change the the lights from yellowish to white at least to to my taste and opinion and then this uh, this ensuite will be more litten it's a beautiful cozy cabin uh, for a couple and again we are going out crossing the corridor we came from there this is the way to the master cabin which we are going to visit soon and we are entering the identical double bed cabin same arrangement slightly different pattern of fabric on the walls same storage space, this hanging drawer, and underneath additional uh, drawers. And here there is a small uh, sitting place, uh, maybe for makeup or just a small uh, station to sit. And then again, the ensuite, uh, which has light marble on the wall on the floor and on the shower sink and we are stepping out and going outside to the corridor and moving forward to the master cabin now the master cabin start with kind of a curve and this is kind of clever because it gives a lot of privacy. This, uh, this turn, first thing, uh, you can see the uh, walk-in wardrobe, which can be closed with the sliding door, this one. So it's a very good uh, storage space with the drawers underneath and a lot of uh, open space storage as well as hanging drawer and we are turning forward and there is a beautiful beautiful master cabin there is a couch on the starboard side a more natural light there are two portholes in each side uh, the design is slightly different on the port side there is a small uh, table and there are a lot of uh, drawers all around down here 
beautiful special design two colors of wood for the air conditioning uh, vents um, now the design here design items now behind this uh, this can be opened and this is the escape hatch according to regulations and this will lead to the crew uh, cabin on the bow and this is a uh, this is the way uh, that has been agreed for a uh, escape exit so this is uh this is the other side and there is a TV screen there and uh, let's go to see the ensuite and as uh, of course on the other cabins there is a Bose surround system here music system a small uh, makeup table with a mirror down here with a small uh, seater and we are moving into the uh, ensuite of the master cabin then again it's a bit challenging with the for the camera to see the details uh, the marble is black so it's a bit challenging I'll try to open the, the window a bit let's see what I can do <coughs> Okay, open the port light. Let's see if this help us a little bit. So there is a sink here and back there some storage area and the shower. It's a big wide shower with a bench. And some space for a uh, shampoo and so on and we are stepping out of the ensuite back to the master cabin it's really a beautiful master cabin very good lightning system and we are moving all the way back and uh, this is the door of the master cabin and heading back to the salon 11 stairs good chance to enjoy a little bit of sun most of the day was cloudy but the sun went out now from here we will go uh, downstairs to see the kitchen engine room and uh, the additional two crew cabins which are all uh, here at the end of this stairway this is the engine room we will visit it soon now we have here a wine fridge and this is the the galley let's have an overview So let's let's uh, talk about the details. There is a, some kind of a storage space here. We will look into that soon. Okay, so there are two uh, Electrolux machines here. Uh, this one is the fridge. This one is the 
uh, freezers. Well, I think I mixed it. This one is the fridge, the other one is the freezers. Uh, I believe both can be adjusted to either be a freezer or a fridge. There is a small uh, uh, crew mess here to let the crew uh, sit down, relax. Uh, they have their own TV there, a security camera, which they can watch the situation out. And this is the ship control, which they can uh, control the um, tank levels, uh, opening and closing of doors and hatches. So here we are. Again, the galley from a different angle. It's quite a good size galley for this type of a sailing yacht. Let's quickly see the additional machinery. There is a bin here, an ice maker, two sinks, one large, one small. Uh, there is a dishwasher here, commercial dishwasher, stove from Bosch and electrical uh, barbecue from Gaggenau, uh, working surfaces, there is a, a professional uh, microwave from Gaggenau, and down here there is a baking uh, oven, uh, then again from uh, Gaggenau. Storage space, plenty underneath and above. And talking about storage space, uh, there is additional kind of a storage room, uh, space for cleaning materials, uh, another big uh, refrigerated storage for vegetables, uh, inside uh, storage for uh, dry food, such as rice, pasta, and so on. And then there is an, another uh, portable fridge down here. Now, from here, uh, we will go to see the two crew cabins, which are a little bit messy. And I have to mention again that the boat is going to be hauled out tomorrow, so people are arranging stuff very busy. Uh, there is a, a dryer here for laundry, washing machine for laundry, and then a crew cabin for two people. Um, there's quite a lot of storage space all around. There is a, a porthole there for fresh air, reasonable size uh, beds, and this uh, cabin has its own uh, bathroom with toilet, shower, it's a wet toilet with a shower just in front of the toilet and a sink. Now, uh, identical uh, crew cabin is on the starboard side, the way to reach there is again crossing the, the galley just behind this door. So, <clears throat> so here is the identical uh, crew cabin, um, storage space, more storage, and two beds. storage space uh, above the beds, uh, a porthole for uh, fresh air or light can be of course uh, sealed during cruising. And there is also an emergency exit which leads to the deck right from here. Same arrangement with the toilet, shower and small sink and that was the last uh, crew cabin and from here we will go to see the engine room now this is the door it's a watertight door to the engine room 
and let's see what we have here. Uh, it's quite dense engine room, though uh, it is definitely still accessible for service. Um, so we have uh, two Scania engines here. They are located down there, one here starboard side and port side, each with 430 horsepower with about 3,000 running hours at the moment. These two big electrical uh, engines are uh, related to the Lumar hydraulic system which runs all the uh, winches to run the rigging and we have two generators here this one is the larger one with 40 kilowatts on the starboard side just above the Scania engine there is another Cummins uh, Onan uh, generator here with 27 kilowatts uh, the generators uh, both of them has fairly uh, large running hours uh, this one has 15,000 and the larger ones has 18,000 still running and functioning. On the port side uh, there is a there is there are two water makers from Hydromar uh, both together they will produce about 500 liters uh, per hour. This is the time to mention the liquid capacity on this boat. Uh, there are uh, nearly 9,000 liters of fuel and uh, five, uh, 5,500 liters of water. Uh, here you can see all the battery chargers, uh, inverters from Vitron. Um, and let's have a look at the bilge just to understand the quality of the hull construction. So the boat has been built in 2013 and you can see the quality of construction uh, it's all painted with epoxy from inside all the frames has uh, has epoxy fill up in the in the corners um, everything uh, looks very very uh, good in good shape epoxy holds and seal the the wood and uh, Sumarine is uh, known for this quality of construction. It's a very good shipyard, and they're, uh, they are definitely known for the quality. So one more look at this uh, Lumar hydraulic power station. Uh, in front of us, we see the exhaust system of the main engines, uh, water pumps down here. Um, so that's that's about uh, that's about it with the big details of the engine room, and we are going back through the engine room door, up the stairs to the salon, and here we are again on the aft deck, and. This is Barney here, nearly not seen. Uh, his fur is the same color as the sunbeds.